do you want to become a UX designer but have no knowledge or experience in design? Then don't worry. In this video, I'm going to take you through the six steps that you can take to become a UX designer and start your journey in UX design. My name is Mana Madan and I'm a designer and a researcher based out of New Delhi, India. Many people say that UX is tough or it's complicated, but it's really not. I promise if you follow through the six steps that I recommend, you will love your journey in becoming a UX designer. I'll also add all the links in the description below, below that like button. So you can check them out later after this video. And before I start the video, I'm just going to say this video is all about the basics of UX design and not about portfolios or case study. I'm not going to cover anything about creating your portfolio or making a case study. That's another video for another time. So let's start the video right after this intro. Step one is learning the basics. So there are two things that you need to learn here. One are the principles of design and one is the principles of user experience. And the reason why this is the first step is because these will give you a foundation, especially if you are someone who's not from the design background, developing the basics of design and user experience is going to be very crucial for you. If your foundation is weak. It doesn't matter how much you try in the future. You will not be able to produce good designs because you don't know what the basics are. Your foundation is not built upon that. So make sure you read the principles of design and principles of user experience very carefully and try to understand them. The intent here is not to mug it up or just memorize it. The intent here is to study them and understand them. Take two to three weeks in learning and understanding about principles of design and principles of user experience. I'll link some good articles in the description below so you can check them out in detail. I'm not going to cover those because I have to keep this video short. Second step is understanding what a design process is. So a design process is nothing but the steps that you take to solve a problem and arrive to a solution. Sometimes what happens is when you start creating a design, you don't really have a direction to follow through and you just start doing random things at random amount of time, which sometimes provide you a solution, but it takes a long time to reach to a solution and the solution is not even that good at the first place. The purpose of a design process is to shape and guide your work to improve your outcome. It streamlines your work and guides you to the steps that you should take or you can take to arrive to a solution, which can be very helpful in a lot of cases. You will realize this once you start designing stuff that following a process really helps in improving your designs and the outcome of your designs. The three of the most common design processes that I have seen people using are the design thinking and the double diamond. You can choose either one of them to start with. Take them as a reference when you're starting to design something. I'll also link some more articles about these different design processes explaining all these design processes in detail. I'll link them in the description below, below the like button and you can check them out. The third step in becoming a UX designer is learning the tools. So in total, there are four kinds of tools that you will need to learn. Design tools, prototyping tools, handoff tools and analytics tool. Let's start with the design tools. There are three design tools that are being used right now in the industry. Sketch, Figma and Adobe XD. Now you can choose any one of them. It's very essential that you understand how these tools work and how to use these tools because you will have to use these tools every day. The next is prototyping tools. Now in prototyping tools also, there are two kinds of tools. One is rapid prototyping tools and one is interactive prototyping tools. Rapid prototyping tools are the tools in which you just link all the screens and create a clickable prototype with no transitions or a little bit of transitions. Uh, rapid prototype tools are Envision and Marvel. Again, both of them are free. You can use any one of them. In interactive prototyping, there are two choices that I recommend. One is principal and one is after effect. I'd recommend you start with principal because it's fairly simple. Although there is a 14 day trial and principal is only for Mac. Another choice is Protopie. Protopie is also an interactive design prototyping tool that you can use. Adobe After Effects is a very complicated tool. There are a lot of things that you can achieve because it's a pro tool and you need very little things to make an interactive prototyping from that tool. But the tool in itself is very complicated. So I don't recommend if you're a beginner to start with Adobe After Effects, learn it and eventually you can switch from Protopie or principal to Adobe After Effects. But the amount of control and transitions that you can achieve through Adobe After Effects is far superior than that you can achieve from principal or prototype. Now let's get on to handoff tools. So before I go, go into handoff tools, let me define what a handoff is. Since a developer cannot read what the different dimensions of the file are, like what is the size of an icon, what is the size of this type face, what is the distance between one card and another card. Earlier, what the designer have to do is on a UI screen, they have to create these red lines and mention all the distances, which was very complicated and it took a lot of time and more effort from designer. A tool called Zeppelin solved this problem. 
So now, whatever you do, whatever design tools you use, you export everything in a tool called Zeppelin. And Zeppelin automatically identifies all the spaces, colors, sizes of all the elements in your design. It's pretty much the industry standard right now. Every company uses Zeppelin for handoff. And the last tool that I recommend you start learning right now is Google Analytics. Google Analytics is the tool that is being used by every single industry and company in this world right now. And trust me, if you as a designer know how to operate Google Analytics and how to read Google Analytics and how to use Google Analytics, you will definitely have an edge over the other designers who are competing against you because not all designers know how to use Google Analytics. A designer who can understand data, who can understand analytics and take better design decisions because he or she knows how their design is working in the real world by understanding the analytics of the designs that they have produced. But Google Analytics is really something that you will be able to use once you are working in a company in real time. When you get your first internship or first job, just ask your PMs or your design team that you want to see your Google Analytics dashboard and they'll be really happy to provide you that. And trust me, they'll be impressed as well because as I said, there are very few designers that know how to use Google Analytics. Now learning all these tools will take you a fair amount of time. It's, it's easily going to take you up to two months to learn all these tools and master all these tools. So take your time. Becoming a designer is not a sprint, it's a marathon. The fourth step is understanding the guidelines. Now, there are two kinds of products that are dominating the market right now. One is Google and one is Apple. And both of them have their different design guidelines. Google have their material design guidelines and Apple have their human interface guidelines. So if you'll be designing the interfaces now, you'll be designing them either for Android or for iOS. Because both of these guidelines are different, you have to go through each of them. Now I link in the description below both the guidelines, the material design guidelines and the human interface guidelines. You can go and check them out. These are very in-depth recommendations both by Google and Apple on how to design an interface best for their system or best user experience. But again, these will be just recommendations. When you're creating an actual design, you have a choice to make to not follow the guideline. And if that is the right thing to do to achieve a certain solution, then you can do that. Understand these guidelines. And then again, the intent is not to learn these guidelines by heart or by brain. What these guidelines will do is they'll help you familiarize with different components that an operating system has to offer and the different ways they recommend that you can use. It's really helpful for a beginner designer because when you're starting to design, you are out of ideas, right? You don't know what components to work. You don't know the difference between a model and a bottom sheet. You don't know the difference between fixed navigation, bottom navigation and top navigation. You don't know what is the icon size that you need to use. You don't know what should be the text size for a heading or for a title. And these are the very little, little nuances and different things that many young designers start asking all these questions are answered in these guidelines. Go through these guidelines thoroughly, understand these guidelines, familiarize yourself with the different OS and what they have to offer. In future, if you have any question like what should be the size of a text in a button, just go back to these guidelines and read about them. So again, take around two to three weeks in learning each of the guidelines, like two to three weeks in learning the material design guidelines and two to three weeks in understanding the human interface guidelines by Apple. If you like this video so far, Please show your support by hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel. Also share this video to someone who needs it and hit the notification icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. The fifth step in becoming a UX designer is learning and understanding all the different terms that are being used in user experience design. There's a word for it which is called glossary. A glossary is nothing but a collection of terms that is being used in a certain domain. When you work in a certain domain, if you use the terms that are being used in this domain or the terms of the trade, you can communicate with those people easily and you understand what they are saying. For example, if I say the affordance on this card is too weak. If you don't know what affordance means, then you won't be able to understand and you're going to ask affordance for what? I mean, what, what do you mean by affordance? What's, what's that? I link a very good glossary that I've come across, which collects all the terms that are being used in UX design and explains them very well. So go through those terms and understand and read those terms very carefully. Uh, and at first, these might feel a little bit difficult to comprehend or understand what they mean. You can read one terminology one day and then try to use it in your everyday life. And the last step in becoming a UX designer is learning about the laws of UX. Laws of UX are different from principles of UX and principles of design. So don't get confused between these two things. Now, to learn the laws of UX, you have your lifetime. There are a lot of laws that you will come across through your 
whole design career. But to start with, there are 20 laws that you need to familiarize yourself with. So these laws are based on psychology and how humans think and behave. There's a website called Laws of UX created by Job Yeblinsky. I hope I'm not butchering the name here. If you go to these websites, he have explained all the laws in very depth and detail and it's a very well designed website and i really love the website i recommend this website to everyone who asked me what are the next steps that you can take in becoming a good designer is understanding how the laws of ux work understanding how humans think and behave in the world and on the internet again take a 20 day challenge learn one law each day and then when whenever you're critiquing a design try to think what laws they have used in their design or is there any law that you have learned recently that a design have used that will help you understand these laws better and it will help you also remember all these laws so these are the six steps that you can take and start your journey as a ux designer but wait you might be wondering not a single time throughout the video i have mentioned you to practice design you have to practice your design uh, every day make a habit of practicing one hour a day so go to Ribble home screen and open the designs or visual designs that you really like. I want you to copy those designs pixel by pixel. Download those designs, open in your favorite design tool, start tracing and drawing over those. When you copy someone's design, that will help you understand the decisions they took. And also that will help you learn how certain elements work, how they have thought, what color they have used, why they have used it. So basically you reverse engineer all the decisions that they have taken. Another thing that you can do is take a 30 day UI challenge. There is a website called dailyui.co which gives you one UI challenge every single day. While you're practicing, just be aware that the goal of these practices is to understand how design is being made, especially when you're copying or tracing somebody's design and getting comfortable with the idea that you might not design something incredible in the first go. It might take you some iterations or some time or some revisions in reaching your final designs. And also one thing that I want to tell you or tell all designers are when you start designing, you have this wild imagination. There's a difference between what you can imagine and what you can create. So don't get disheartened if you what you imagine, what you create has a big difference. Just make sure that it's a marathon. Again, it's not a sprint. You will improve little by little every day and there will be a time when what you create is even better than what you imagine. The more you practice, the more you learn, the more you get better. Now, apart from these six steps, there are some extra tips that I really want to give you that I think will be helpful for you. The first tip is join the design communities. They connect you with people with the same goals. They also help you build connections and contacts. Some design communities I recommend are the Discord group of 10k designers, uh, King Siddharth's Discord group and people who designs WhatsApp group. I'll put the link of these design communities in the description below. You can go and check them out. Uh, another tip that I want to give you is start finding a mentor and I have made a whole video about what the role of mentor is and how to find a mentor I link here in the top right corner and in the description below the like button you can check that out the third tip is practice on a daily basis because the more you practice the more you learn the more you become a better designer I'll also mention some more websites that you can use to practice your design skills your UX skills uh, the fourth tip is look for great design inspiration and train your eye for good design uh, the one question that I get asked uh, very often uh, by some people is how to identify a good design and a bad design. And the answer is practicing. Again, once you start consuming a lot of designs, you start to develop an eye for detail and eye for good design and bad design. So I recommend you go to various websites like Dribble, Behance, Awards and look at all these curated good designs and develop an eye for detail and to help us collect all the inspiration at one place there is a plugin called muesli which is like the default chrome extension every designer have on their pc that i have come across so far so it's a chrome extension by envision and once you install that as soon as you open a new tab you have this this whole page where muesli has collected inspiration from all over the internet and put it there on your front page so you can go scroll through them and read even read design news all these inspiration all the top websites of the day the fifth tip is ask for feedback now when you're starting designing you really don't know if you're doing good great or bad and taking feedback will help you understand what you're doing right what you're doing wrong so you can improve that in future now when you join a design community a feedback is very easy because you have people there that are also designers who want to become better designers. And sometimes you also find design expert and experienced designers in those communities. Whenever you create some design, you can ask for feedback on those communities. Or if you find a mentor, 
you can share your designs to the mentor and they will give you feedback upon your design and asking feedback is very 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 crucial because if you don't know what you're doing wrong you will do it continuously and it will not work for you and the last tip that i'm going to give you read design books so there are a lot of books about design that people recommend that you should read the four books that i recommend you should start reading it the first is 100 things every designer should know about people the second book is Design of Everyday Things by Nor Norman. The third book is Design by Simplicity by John Maeda. The fourth book is Design Sprint. And the fifth book is Hacking Growth. So these are the five books that I recommend you should read in these particular order. And these book will definitely help you in understanding what is design, what is simple design, how humans think, behave and everything. So we have reached to the end of the video, my friend. I have mentioned everything that you need to know to start your journey in becoming a UX designer. So all the best for that. If you have any questions or queries, you can comment them down below or reach out to me on Instagram or LinkedIn. My Instagram is at UX and more and my LinkedIn is hello manav triple L. If you have any portfolios or career advice, you can book a session with me on Calendly. I'll link that in the description below. And if you're new to this channel, hello, welcome. My name is Manav Adan and I'm a designer and a researcher based out of New Delhi, India. I share resources, industry insights, best practices, and even bring industrial designers on the channel so we can learn to, from them how to be a better designer and how to grow and pivot our career. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and share this video to someone who needs it. Until next time, this is Manamadan. Thank you for watching UX and more. Chinkwee.